Penta, it's WICR. Hello, Iona College. Welcome back to Entertainment Overload with Jersey Joe and our mom, Adeo, Batman and Robin, MJ and Scotty Pippen. We've just established we are the Flash in Spider-Man, so uh, we're wearing a lot of hats, and uh, we're having a lot of fun on this show. You know, we just did a little recap of the Flash season uh, pilot. If you didn't see it, we both enjoyed it. I would definitely recommend it. You've got Arrow Season 3 tonight, which is very exciting. And our mom, we didn't really get to it in the first one, but the the Walking Dead Season 5 starts this Sunday. A lot of stuff. Were, let's go into Comic-Con, though. What do you have for us on the Comic-Con front? Um, well, from October 3rd to October 10th, uh, there will be various venues that will play host to 145 lectures, podcast recordings, and other events in preparation for the con this week. And all this stuff will essentially be called Super Week. For com- I don't really know that much about comics, but yeah, and Comic Con how this works, but it sounds pretty cool. See, I've <laughs> never been. I exactly, I've never been to Comic Con. I would like to witness it, but I don't think I have the time. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's, uh, I have a chance to go this weekend, but missing football on Sunday for it, I just don't know about that one. And in case anyone was uh, interested in where it's at, it's. Uh, it will be located at the Javits Center. Yep, at the Javits Center. So it's crazy. I mean, you, I, I mean, you. It's obviously a very well-known thing. So you see all the time, like with the people dressing up and stuff like that. So I'll ask you, Armand, if you did go to this type of thing, would, would dress you up dress up? <laughs> if you had to, who, what character uh, would you dress up as? Well, we have to do something as a duo. It, absolutely. I mean, entertainment overload. I don't right know. Here. What do you think, Joe? Give me some uh, suggestions. If it's going to be you and I, I mean, for people who don't know, I mean, we've, we've said it a couple times, but Armand and I are huge Star Wars guys. You know, sometimes oh, we sit in the control I'm room solo. and we just reenact the scenes from Revenge of the oh, Sith. Oh, maybe I should be Anakin. That's what I'm thinking, maybe. Because you've got kind of that Anakin personality. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not not like not like like I don't know. I, no, I do. Not the bad Anakin. I have this but... dark dark <laughs> part to me. And I would say I, I'm a little bit like Obi Wan. You're more the peacemaker. Know? I'm more yeah. the guy I could turn against you at any moment. Because like here's <laughs> the thing, you are Anakin because you are like Anakin was good at heart. It's just like that one thing that kind of messed him up, and you've got that. <laughs> I don't know if he, there's anything that would like that would mess you up. Listen, I'm a very uh, vindictive character. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very possessed, very demented. I know. All right, Joe. <laughs> no, you're a good you guy. You need to say it on the you're air. Good though, you're yeah. a good guy. No, you're a good guy. You need to say I'm guy. troubled by the dark forces <laughs> of the Sith. Oh, man. But yeah, I don't know. I think maybe uh, Obi Wan and Anakin. I could see that one. Listen, you should have turned Padme against me. Okay, Joe. <laughs> What do you, I mean, man, wait, when the new Star Wars comes out, man, Entertainment Overload, we're going to have, like, just, oh, man, like... it's going to be overloaded. People are just going to get tired of it because they, we're just going to be, like, Star Wars, Star Wars, <laughs> Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, man. So, I don't know. I mean, if I had to do, if we had to do different things, like, I, I appreciate, like, the, the, the time people put into some of these costumes. Like, some of these people work on these costumes for, like, a year. From sure, like, we have to come up with Halloween costumes, though. Seriously. We do. For people uh, who will be listening, we on uh, October 28th, which is a Tuesday, the week of Halloween, we have our WICR Radiothon. We have shows going from 9 a.m. to 1 a.m. Our mom, show, right? myself, and Big Shot Rob, Rob and Carter, we're taking the late hours, the late shift, and part of the whole fun of it is a Halloween theme, so we're all dressing up. Now, that <laughs> show we do is going to be have, have a lot of sports content on it, but we're all going to be dressed up, and I'm curious, Armand, do you have any plans so far? Listen, I don't want to give anyone any spoiler alerts. They're going to have to tune in. All right, Joe? There you go. You're, you're keeping Keep them on the edge on of their edge. seat. All you're right? keeping them on the edge of their seat. See, I was... There, there ain't no answers here. They do. I was starting... Oh, I was starting to think about what I might do and I, I'm, I'm struggling with it, you know. I don't really know. I was like, maybe I could just put on a LeBron jersey, put on a headband. Nah, I'm a I, I do that every year. It's but that's, too easy. Exactly. That's too easy. you got to be you know? an actual character. I used, to, I, I used to go to school to get, like, the free dress down in high school because I went to Catholic school. Okay. And if you dressed up for Halloween, you get, like, free dress down. You can wear jeans and a casual shirt, whatever. Nice. So I always, like, people would actually have costumes. I would come in with, like, a Vince Carter jersey, <laughs> shorts. Like high socks, little yeah. Nike Hyper Dunks, a headband. I, res- I said I'm Vince Carter. I well, you don't get like, dressed down for that. No, not yeah. a, not at all. You know, if if we if I was there with you too, I, you know, I would have done a little T Mac. You could have been a little Vince Carter. You know, we have the perfect T ra- uh, Raptors combination. T Rex. You gonna say T Rex? I don't know though. I think maybe if I had to drop a hint, I would say maybe I'm wearing the costume I own a college radio deserves, not the costume I own a college radio needs. Ooh, what does that mean? 
I don't know, I'm kind of taking words from a certain movie and putting them together oh, as a oh, 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 I know, I know, I know. Yeah. You got Batman. it. Batman. There you go. I'm thinking about it, maybe. You know, I actually took something from Batman and put it in my essay. <laughs> oh, I've... For my... What, what class was it? It was my religion class. <laughs> was it the one about some people just want to watch the whole world burn? No, it was something of Harvey Dent in the... In the last move, no. The you second either movie, live long enough to see yourself become the hero. Uh, no, that's a good quote too. It but is. It's something about the dark is that bright as the day, or something like that. He says it. The oh, dark is as, I'm not saying night. it right. Yeah, I know what you. I know which one you're talking. He was talking about Batman, but I was trying to say it because we were talking about some village outside France during the occupation of Germany. Okay. During World War Two, it was called Lee Caban it's or like Lee the- Chambon. They were like, they were uh, protecting refugees that were being targeted by the Nazis and so I compared uh, and I was saying that you have to like like say what you mean by this and I was saying that the dark is something I was talking about tomorrow who's in Harvey Dent you know that's a good point I think the dark Knight is probably one of the most quotable movies of all time there's so many lines in that that are relatable like the one you just mentioned the one I was talking about yeah, either live long enough I remember one of the first papers I ever wrote here for sociology, I was kind of talking about, like, uh, terrorism, the mindset of terrorism, and that quote right there with um, Alfred, (laughs) kind of, where where it's like some, when he told him the story about the jewel thief who was just taking them and just throwing them in the river just for the fun of it, and it's kind of that mentality, some people, Batman, exactly. Batman? Did you put Batman in there, like actual said, cited Batman. I think I said, um, in in uh, Christopher Nolan's critically acclaimed <laughs> film, The Dark Knight, it is written this. You sound like a, a fl- 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 I can't say the word, philanthropist. How Philosopher? No, it was fla- philanthropist. Yeah, philanthropist. There I can't you go. say the word. I don't know, but I, I agree. I mean, I would. <laughs> That's that's really like I love that movie so much. It's one of those ones where I just I'll watch it every single year, just again and again, and it's, it's a nice movie just to dust off because it's so good, so good. But let's move a little bit into the sports front. We gave you your comic book fix. We got into Batman. I think we've talked Batman. We found a way to talk Batman in every show we've done. That's just the way things go, though. I mean, Batman is the man. We are Batman, folks. We're all Batman. <laughs> so we were Godzilla. What happened? Well, can't we be both? Why can't we be Godzilla? There's two totally well, different like, types of Godzilla creatures. in this movie, if you watch, they kind of made him Batman in a way. Oh, gosh. Think of the end of the movie, you know, when he saves everybody at the end, and then he, like, you know, the end, he gives them that last final roar. They're all cheering for him. Sure. My- and Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz is also Batman. Oh, come on. <laughs> Even, I was like, you know what my first thought is when I saw the end of the Godzilla movie? I was like, wow, he's Batman. That's what I thought. You compare that to anything, though. Anyone who saves the day. Okay, sure. Come on, Graffiki's Batman. He influences uh, Simba to come back to Pride Rock. All right? (laughs) Man, I don't know. I don't really know that movie that well. You don't know The Lion King? Not really. Did you not have a childhood? I don't know. You know, I probably did see it. I probably don't remember. I should probably watch it again. I think a you're losing some respect. Wow, we were wow. <laughs> the graffiti's in the trees. <laughs> I think, I think, uh, yeah, I think I'm losing our mom's respect here. So I got to get oh. back to that. Whoa! Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, I definitely do. <laughs> so let's go on though to the sports front. It wouldn't be complete entertainment overload without talking some sports. Now, our mom- Walking Dead, man. We did. Oh man! How do you forget the Walking Dead? Should we go Walking Dead and then go into we baseball? We should. What are your expectations for you know the pilot of season five? I was, you know, I was talking to one of our morning show producers, Brian Walsh, the other day, and he made a good point. I, it seems like in every season of The Walking Dead, there's kind of this like just dead stretch in it, where there's like three or four episodes where they're just killing time, just kind of getting to the inevitable end. And when you get to the end, it's so good, but there's like those couple episodes that are just dull, like really dull i think season four had more of that than any of them um but as always walking dead five will pick up very well because it always ends off well and i'm sure you're gonna see a couple of really boring in between episodes but i'm excited i i love the walking dead i do it's a really good universe. joey my question to you though this is its fifth season yep now it's a zombie show so yeah. well, how much more can you go with a storyline it I think that's a good point because a lot of people have brought that up, you know, are they kind of just, when is this going to end? I mean, you can't just 
keep having these people running forever and ever and ever. I mean, it's like, I mean, I kind of like it, but oh, I mean, me most people will critique the crap. Yeah, out of it. everybody tries to find things about it. And I think the way they've done it is really interesting because it seems like whenever you think you're safe for a little while, like you would think once they found their prison set up for uh, potential spoilers, if you're not caught up, they find a prison, they stay there for a while. The prison things don't work out. It gets kind of overrun. So now they're on the move, and now season five picks up where they think I'm they find on the bandwagon. Jump on the bit. Ba- and see, the thing I think is, you could pick up with the Walking Dead season five without knowing the other ones, because the way they kind of write it and they set that up is it's kind of like a zombie thing. So you could really just pick it up and get into it. Um, but the way it starts off is season five, four. They find that place they think is a new safe haven, but you kind of it's hinted. They don't say it, but you can pretty much use your logic and figure it out. This is not really what it claims to be a safe place. These are cannibals um, who are kind of using that kind of prospect of a safe haven to lure people in. And they are cannibals, so I think you know how that goes. So how are they going to get out of this? That's how Season 5 will start. Joe, I have a mind-blowing statistic for you. I love statistics. Now, statistics are not only just for sports, but it can also be applied to, you know, entertainment itself. That's cool. The Walking Dead, in its first season, earned 5.3 million viewers. Wow. As of last year, after, fi- after the season four finale, you know how many viewers tuned in to watch that? I'm excited to hear this. 15.7. They gained 10 million viewers wow. in four years. That's 10 amazing. Million. That is amazing. You think about AMC in terms of like 10 million TV viewers shows. Years. 10 million viewers. That's insane. In wow. four years, gained, gained, that's gained. only gained, and they started with five. Now they well, have fifteen point seven. But here's the thing: out of those, that huge number, they people, got one more right here. You got one more, Mr. Armand Medeo's now, and it wasn't a complete cast. What was that fifteen point seven one or something like that? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> You're part of the fifteen. Math is not my uh, forte. Did, oh, neither am I. You know that's why we stick Matt to forte. sports. Matt Forte, exactly. I would coughed rather up the rock, coughed up the rock. I'd rather game, you man. know the stats of Matt Forte than tell me how to do a long division problem. You know that's just the way it goes. But I'm glad that you're on board. Uh, I'm gonna be excited to be talking some Walking Dead. The problem is it conflicts with Sunday Night Football. So that's that's. I think that's honestly my problem. Why I've never watched it. It's the same thing with me. I mean, I I always want like to stay with it, but you just can't. No, you know what you do. You just DVR and watch it Monday. And that's a good point. That's why I do. We're just gonna have that's to what DVR. I'm going to do. You and I, you know, we're gonna do it for the show for entertainment overload. We'll find a way to watch it no matter what. So it should be fun. Joe, to talk you better it. been watching Gotham. Have you been watching it? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, we were so hyped for I, it. Joe, you know what? You abandoned me, Joe. You were all on board, and now you just. I'll tell you this, the there, well, there's what, three right. episodes of it so far? Yes. I will try to catch up. We have a long weekend That's for Columbus Day, only three episodes. I Go on Hulu, you'll find yeah. like, you got to find two hours and 15 minutes, Yeah. Because right? it's 45 minutes a show. You'd be well, right. give us the little runs. I mean, what, did, what have you thought of the first three episodes? Have you enjoyed oh, them? It, it's transitioning real well. I really mean, James well? Gordon, played by uh, B- Benjamin McKenzie, great fit, great fit for the role. Uh, there's a lot of storyline. The the penguin, the guy who plays the penguin's pretty sick, sick, sick. in the head, yeah. but in a good way. Like he plays his role great. Yeah, it does a good job. Um, yeah, there's a lot of room for. There's a lot of storyline. A lot of things are happening, and the show is going down a great path. Awesome. You know, I'm. It's funny because when we did that show preview, I you I were so hyped, with so me, man. excited for it, but it's that thing. It conflicts with the with Sunday with the Monday Night Football, but I really want to catch up on it. So DVR, man, I will DVR for a reason. I d- I will I I will definitely have to catch up on it because then uh, on Monday without we don't, won't have any school that day. We'll have a nice little day to catch up on this fourth episode. I so you know what I think we need to do. We need to have a TV episode mania. Yeah, I agree. Right. We're gonna have a, a little TV- Gotham, a little Arrow, a little oh. Flash. Beautiful. Little you know, Walking Dead. I always enjoy that. Like, have you ever done a thing where you just go all in? Like, you you yeah, go it's to the summertime. theater. <laughs> exactly. I think the the I one time one summer I did Captain America, then Transformers. Uh, please tell me you sneaked into those. And then no, of uh, course. I well, come on. I'm an honesty broker. <laughs> honesty Listen, broker. So am I. But if I'm going into one movie and then another movie's across the way, I'm going into the other movie. <laughs> come well, on. I, I went. Captain America, Transformers, then the last Harry Potter movie. So it was a pretty action-filled day. All good movies. So that was a couple years ago. Last Harry it was. Potter movie. It was a while ago. I, I haven't done a movie thing like that. Thanks since. for the invite, Joe. I, I'm unfortunately I didn't know you then. So yes, you uh, did. 
Freshman year, bro. That was freshman year? Are you know. sure? I'm just saying stuff. I don't even remember wearing that. No. But we'll just say it was. All right, we'll just okay. blame you anyway. To make me feel bad, yeah. Okay. Yes. I don't know. We should definitely do that, though. You know, Arrow. We should. Arrow, a little bit of Flash now. Gotham, Walking Dead. It is a good time for TV. It is a good time for sports. We've got a couple minutes left, so Armand, I want to ask you. We have the uh, championship series set up. You have the you have the St. Louis Cardinals and the San Francisco Giants in the NL. You've got the Kansas City Royals and the Baltimore Orioles in the AL. So for you, does this bring any excitement? Because it does. The thing I've been saying is I think for us who are just the huge sports fans, yes, but for the average viewers, this is not very good setup for series. Listen, you know what it brings excitement for? It brings an excitement for the Battle of Missouri. I'm talking Kansas City, St. Louis, Missouri. I know. But that's the thing is, who outside of that is going to care? People in Florida are going to care. People no. in Texas are going to care. People in New York want to care. Maybe if the Yankees and Dodgers are playing each other in the World Series, then people would probably care. And the thing about it, too, is star power. I mean, these are good baseball teams, but there's not a lot of star power. I did not power. know that the... The the Los Angeles Dodgers had the biggest ca- have the biggest payroll in the oh. league. I thought the Yankees. When did they over? It remember when they took on the the salaries of they took a uh, Carl Crawford. They took Beckett yeah, from but they the Red Sox. The Yankees. Oh yeah, that must be the first time in a God knows how. I long. think that they're over the two hundred million dollar mark. I think their payroll is somewhere like two two hundred seventeen million or something like that. Yankees, I think the Yankees are around like two hundred five. Yeah, they're. I think they're over. They're around that or something. There's but. only a couple teams that are. I think the Red Sox are. I mean, you look at them. I mean, Granky and Kershaw's contracts alone are like just just huge. Both are worth it. I, I, but that's what I'm asking. Despite you about. Kershaw, let's struggling talk with Clayton the Kershaw Cardinals. now. We all know how big of a Clayton Kershaw guy I am, but he's gotten a lot of criticism in this postseason. Zero and two with a seven point. 8-2 ERA. Armand, does, do we, should we look at Kershaw differently based on his regular season results no, in his, I do not. Po- in his postseason? You don't think so? Listen, Kershaw, if you even look at both games, he had a great game. It's just the seventh inning. Maybe they should take him out. He got rocked in the seventh inning of both games. He gave up, I think, 11 runs in both seven innings. 11 runs in seven innings. I, I mean, think he gave up a run in any other inning. People have been making the comparison, you know, Peyton Manning, Clayton Kershaw is the Peyton Manning of baseball now, kind of, you know, Good the point. regular season, he is just lights out, then when it comes to the postseason, he just hasn't delivered, um, I don't know, should we look at him differently, I think, well, the Dodgers are one of the better run supporter teams, exactly, and I, I mean, think, they've been struggling at the bat, they so. have, Yasio Puig, man, talk about a guy who just absolutely fell off, oh. he was just invisible, do you think that uh, Magley drew a lot of criticism for not pitch hitting Puig for Justin Turner? What do you think about that? I thought at the time, you know, I thought it was definitely going to be controversial. I think he made the right move. Just Puig couldn't get anything going. Turner's a nice guy to put in. He's a good player. I mean, I don't know, but I feel like Puig, that would be the moment for him to, like, change everything around. I, I the think, bottom of the yeah. ninth. I mean, top of the ninth. Trying to get out of that slump, that AK slump. Was he shook out eight times? I think something like that. Yeah, he was. I mean, so maybe he could have came through with the big hit. A good point. I mean, here's the thing: his talent is undeniable. I mean, it, which is what drives you crazy about him because he has so much. Talent. I would pick take Justin Turner for Carl Crawford. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with that. But I don't know. Carl I mean, Crawford. Every time I watch him, grounds out. <laughs> the, the thing I was thinking about is. Is Don Mattingly's job going to be in trouble here? Is he on the hot seat? Yes, he is. I think he, he, he I, I is. I don't think he should be. I think he's a great manager, one of the better managers in the league. But you know where he's going. Yeah. He's going to be a New York Yankee. I don't, coming back to the Yankees staff? Yeah. I don't know. I can would, see it. I think he would get another uh, managing job somewhere. Oh. It's not. I mean, it is his fault, but... I blame him more on the on the hitting than the pitching. I mean, I think in baseball it's hard. You know, in football when things don't go well for a while and you consistently can't get over that hump, I think that's a very reflective of the head coach. In baseball, I'm always torn on that because there's only so much a manager can do. I mean, at the end of the day, it's more about the players performing. And I think for the Dodgers, really, I mean, it just their their go to guy Clayton Kershaw just couldn't deliver for them. It, it, it's that, too, and it's just they cannot beat the Cardinals. I mean, if oh. they were to play anyone else, I think if they played the Giants, they would have beat them. I think if they would have played the Nats, they would have beat them. It's just they can't get over that Cardinal hump. And I want to say this. I mean, since, what, 2010 now, it's been Giants, 
Cardinals, Giants, Cardinals, Giants. <laughs> I've got to be honest. I'm kind of sick and tired of seeing <laughs> Giants, Cardinals. I and if it's not one of my teams, I want to see different a variety. Want, listen, Joe. We know you cried last night. <laughs> We know. I did cry a little. The the good thing was as soon as the Dodger game was over and I was put out of my misery, Flash was on, so that kind of helped me recover. Look at that. I mean, Clayton Kershaw's my guy. Clayton Kershaw, see Andrew. Your tweets, I see everything. Yeah. Kershaw, oh, man, Kershaw, if you do Kershaw. follow me at Sportsfault Iona, you'll see I tweet about the like Dodgers the next a lot. Cy Young. Oh, I don't Well, that's the thing. Does this, does this impact, does it change his regular season for you at all? Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Repeat the question. You know, We've all pretty much established we think Kershaw is the hands-down Cy Young winner and uh-huh. the MVP of the National League. Yeah. Does his bad performance in the in the postseason kind of change that for you at all? Like I said, no, I I don't think so. It's just it's against the Cardinals. It's only he has this problem with the Cardinals. I don't think it's with the playoffs itself. He's a big game pitcher. Like I said, through the first six innings, he was untouchable in both games. It's just the seventh inning, he got rocked. He left a couple balls up in the zone, especially against Matt Adams. He threw a hanging curveball up in the dead middle. So obviously, I mean, Matt Adams got good wood on it, and it's gonna go places. And plus, there are a couple things you can't take away. D. Gordon, the hit, that ground ball up the middle. Yeah. D. Gordon, there's not the D. Gordon. That was a good play, but Hanley Ramirez should have caught that line oh. drive bloop. That that should be an error. I'm sorry. He that has, was not Kershaw. It should have been 2-2. He has killed killed the Dodgers in the field this yeah. year, Hanley. The, the, Clayton had a chance to get that perfect game. I, Who's the one that ruined it? Hanley yeah, Ramirez. I'm telling you, it's not... Like I'm going to say no for that question you said. I agree. I think It's just his troubles, his troubles with the Cardinals. I think it. you can't take anything away that he did in the regular season. That was special. I mean, mm-hmm. that was one of the best regular season pitching performances I've ever seen. And I, I can't take... It's sort of like Mariano, how he struggled with the Red Sox in the years with David Ortiz yeah. and with Napoli. There's some guys, Marco Scudero banged around Mariano. There's certain pictures just can't get it done against certain teams. And Kershaw... He can't find a, a way to beat the Cardinals. And I didn't think about that either. I mean, if you do think about it, most of his unsuccessfulness in the playoffs has been against the Cardinals. It's all of it's against the Cardinals. Which is a good point because, I mean, it would be one thing if it was just consistent against everybody he played against. He wasn't getting the job done. But you're right. It has been against one team. And it's kind of like I, Le- LeBron, yeah. it reminded me of a little bit. You know, LeBron could never get past the, the Celtics, Celtics for a while. Exactly. The See, Celtics could never, he, the crux for for him. All these superstars have problems with one or two with teams. One, You'll see yeah. that constantly in sports. Armand, you've opened my eyes this morning I have. with this point because you know I was feeling kind of depressed about it, about Clayton Kershaw. I was like, oh no, is this another thing Tony, where... if you I, would play the Giants or Nats, you would have won 2-0 in both series. You know, you've Foul given down. me hope again. My hope is renewed, Armand. Thank you. You know, thank you. That is. A, could you end the morning, the uh, entertainment? I'm like over? a rainbow. It's a futuristic you bright are bow. a rainbow. All right. You're the you flash. See in the sky. You're Batman. You no know good things are about to come. There you go. Right, Sack Daddy. <laughs> Our man Ian Sack yeah. in the control room, giving us the thumbs up over there. Armand, that is going to wrap it up. You have any final points you want to say? I just want to say thank you and good night. Thank you and good night. I couldn't say it better myself. Thank you and good night. Enjoy Arrow Season 3. Or good morning. I'm sorry. There you, or good morning, depending on where you listen. You know, we got listeners <laughs> everywhere. But I will be enjoying Arrow Season 3 so much tonight. Very excited for it. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. You all have a great day. Tune in Wednesday. Tune in Wednesdays, folks.